Today we are looking at 11.5 similar figures. And our ICANN statements are, I can name corresponding angles and corresponding sides of similar figures. I can identify similar figures. And I can find unknown measures of similar figures. So for our um, key idea here, similar figures are shapes that are figures that have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. And we looked at similar triangles um, earlier in the year in chapter 12. So here we see two triangles that are similar. The um, similarity statement has the letters in the same order as our corresponding angles, just like with um, congruent figures that we saw in our 11.1 um, lesson. So um, triangle ABC in this picture is triangle similar to triangle DEF. And there at the bottom, there are statements about the side lengths. And the side lengths are going to be proportional. And then the corresponding angles are going to be equal. And then the figures, there's a little squiggly line. Triangle ABC is similar to that little squiggly line, similar to triangle DEF. So for a first type of problem, you're looking at the picture and you're identifying which one is similar. Now, looking at this picture, um, I don't think it's too challenging to look at the rectangles and see which two seem like they're the same shape. One is um, a much you know, skinnier, longer rectangle than the other one. Um, but we need to use side lengths and proportions to help support our um, which ones are similar, just like we did with our similar solids in um, Chapter 15. So we're going to write ratios of sides here. So I'm going to call this one 3 to 6. I'm going to call this one 2 to 6. And then I'm going to call this one 2 to 4. Now, you could take your ratios and write them as simplest form fractions, or you could write them in two decimals. I'm going to do similar, uh, simplest form fractions here. So 3 6, that simplifies to 1 half. So the short side is 1 half of the length of the long side. 2 6 simplifies to 1 third. And 2 4 simplifies to 1 half. So rectangle C and rectangle A are the two rectangles that are similar. And you do need to have the work to support your answer. So for this next problem, it says rectangle D is three units long and one unit wide. Which rectangle is similar to rectangle D? Take a minute, pause the video, and think about it. Let's see if you're right. So three units long and one unit wide. On the last slide, I'll go back for a second, um, we chose to put the small sides on the top. It didn't really matter which way. I could have put the small sides on the bottom, but I chose to put them on the top. So um, if I'm looking at which one's going to be the same as 1 to 3, that's going to be rectangle D. 1 to 3, that's going to be the same as our ratio for rectangle D. That simplified to 1 third. Let's take a look at our next problem. So it says the triangles are similar, find X. So we're going to write and solve a proportion for this one. We've done other problems very similar to this this year. So we need to write a proportion. I'm going to start with my top triangle. I'm going to put the shorter side in the numerator um, or in the top part of my proportion. So 6 over 8. I'm going to do a very neat job of writing that so I can erase it. 6 over 8 equals, and then I'm going to do 9 um, over x. So I chose to put my um, shorter sides on the top part of my proportion. I put the larger sides on the bottom part of my proportion. Um, I'm not seeing an easy multiplication pattern on this one. So we're going to go ahead and do cross products. So 6 times x, that equals 6x. 9 times 8, that equals 72. I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And when I do 72 divided by 6, I get 12. And 12 meters is going to be our answer. So just pay attention to those labels. Make sure you're putting appropriate labels on your answer. All right, pause the video. Try these next two problems. Okay, let's see if your answers are correct. So the figures are similar. Find x. We're going to use proportions to help us with this. So for my first triangle, I'm going to write 6 over x. My second triangle, I'm putting 9 over 6. I'm just choosing to have the longer sides on the top this time, but it doesn't really matter. Cross products. So I get 9 times x equals 6 times 6, which is 36. I divide both sides by 9. And I get the answer x equals 4. For my second shape here, um, so I can use a proportion. I don't really need to on this one. I'll show you another way in a second. But if I'm going to use a proportion, I have 14 over x equals 7 over 12. 
I could do cross products, but on this one, um, I'm noticing that there's a scale factor. Remember, scale factor means how many times bigger, how many times smaller. If it's proportional, um, it's going to be the same. So on this one, from 14 to 7, that's a relationship of dividing by 2. Each side length in the second shape is half of the side of the original one. So I have to think what number divided by 2 is going to equal 12. So I can work backwards to do that 12 times 2. That's going to give me an answer of 24. And our label in this one is going to be centimeters. So if I did 7 times 2, that gives me 14. And then 12 times 2 tells me my value for x. I can use a proportion. I don't have to use a proportion, but I do have to show my work. Let's take a look at this next one. An artist draws a replica of a painting that is on the Berlin Wall. The painting includes red trapezoids. The shorter base of the similar trapezoid in the replica is 3 and 75 hundredths inches. What is the height h of the trapezoid in the replica? So we're, again, we're going to set up and solve a proportion for this one. You can look for a scale factor as well if you would prefer to use that strategy. Okay, so 12 over 15, that represents my um, top shape that's the replica of the painting or I'm sorry top shape is the painting the bottom one is the replica the shorter side on the top 12 and H those two corresponds I'm going to put H on the top and then three and seventy five hundredths goes on the bottom all right so now that I have the proportion set up pause the video go ahead and solve it okay let's see if you did it correctly so 15 times H, that's 15 H, so, uh, 3 and 75 hundredths times 12, that's 45. And then we divide both sides by 15, cancel out that 15 in front of the H. And then 45 divided by 15 is 3, so that tells me that the side H is going to be 3 inches long. Okay, next one. What if the longer base in the replica is four and a half inches? What is the length of the longer base in the painting? Okay, so if we go back to our picture, the longer base. So um, the longer base, this is a trapezoid. So the other base is this side right here. That's the side that's the longer base. So they're telling us that the longer base is going to be four and a half inches. So we're still using the numbers for um, the other sides here, the 3 and 75 hundredths and the 15. Those are going to stay the same. And then we're going to put in our new numbers for our numerator. So the 15 is staying the same for the big trapezoid. We don't know um, the length of the base here. I'm going to use B for base. And then I know um, the shorter base, 3 and 75 hundredths, and then the taller one is four and a half. So I put my original numbers for um, the shorter base on the bottom, and then I put my new numbers for the longer base on the top. And now I'm ready to solve my proportion. So pause the video, take a minute, and go ahead and solve it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this one with cross products. So if I do three and seventy-five hundredths times B, I get um, sixty-seven and a half. That sixty-seven and a half goes from the fifteen times four and a half. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and 75 hundredths, cancel out the multiplication of the 3 and 75 hundredths with the B. So that cancels out on that side. And let's see, when we do um, 67.5 divided by 3 and 75 hundredths, we get 18. And we want to use the same label that we had before, which is inches. Okay, and then for this last one, take a minute and think about it. So sketch two figures that look similar. Describe how you would determine whether your figures are actually similar. So pause for a minute and try this problem. Okay, let's check your work. I'm going to use rectangles here. And I'm going to come up with some numbers. Let's see, I'm going to use 4 and 8. And then I'm going to make a smaller rectangle. And I'm going to do 2 and 4. And then to explain it here, I would have a scale factor of one half. If I did eight divided by two, I get four. If I do four divided by two, because divided by two is the same thing as one half, 
I get 2. I could also write equivalent um, ratios here. 8 over 4 simplifies to 2, and 4 over 2 simplifies to 2. So they have that same ratio. That means the sides are going to be similar.